Hello students, in the previous session we learned about a massive movement of people of Uttarakhand against the deforestation that is Chipko movement. In today's session we will be learning about another such environment protection move globally known as the Silent Valley movement. Here also the movement was against the wrong step of the government. In 1970, Kerala State Electricity Board KSEB proposed a hydroelectric project and planned to make a dam across the Kundipura river that runs through Silent Valley. There were three main arguments made for the Silent Valley hydroelectric project, in short SVPH. The first one was that it will generate electricity for the state of Kerala with the installation of four units of 60 megawatt each. KSEB substantiated this argument with the fact that state electricity requirements will not be met without this additional power. The second one is to irrigate an additional 100 square kilometers in Malapuram and Palakkad district and the third one was that it will provide employment to several thousands of people during the construction phase and boost the economy of the state. During 1971 and 72, different scientists and naturalists did extensive studies on how this project would have adverse effect on the ecosystem of Silent Valley. Among them, Stephen Green, a scientist from the New York Zoological Society and a herpetologist, Rome Whitaker should be mentioned with importance. Green did a study on primates, especially lion-tailed macaque in Silent Valley and expressed concern about the possible threat to the rare macaque from the project. Whitaker did a study on the pro effect of the project on the snakes of the region and he wrote to a letter to the Bombay Natural History Society about the need to conserve the valley. These reports were alarming to the naturalists and they started to protest and pointed towards the protection and conservation of Silent Valley. In 1973, the planning commission approved the project, but the same was delayed because of the insufficient funds. By this time, protests began to mount against the project. In 1976, National Committee on Environment Planning and Coordination sets up a task force to study the ecological problems that could be caused by the project. The task force gave a report against the project, but with a loophole that if abandoning the project is not possible, a series of safeguards should be implemented. Kerala government took a decision to go ahead with the project. In 1977, Sadish Chandra Nair, a field biologist started spreading awareness about the impact of the project on environment and Silent Valley ecosystem. Dr. V. S. Vijayan of the Kerala Forest Research Institute did a study on the impact of the hydroelectric projects on the environment. Yes, Prabhagarin Nair and Professor John Jacob tried to spread the need for the conservation of Silent Valley and it led to the spring up of nature clubs in different parts of the state. This led to the representation of the protest in national and international level. The General Assembly of IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, urged the government to conserve the forest area. Even after all these protests and the appeals from different agencies, then Prime Minister Morarad Jaisai directed the start of the project immediately. In 1979, Kerala government started the project. Silent Valley Samrakshana Samadhi and Kerala Shastra Sahitya Parishad started awareness campaigns and then it turned this into a mass people movement. Also, Silent Valley Samrakshana Samadhi went to High Court of Kerala against the project and obtained a stay order to stop the work. But later in 1980, the writ plea was rejected saying that it is not for the courts to go into the merits of scientific arguments and that it is satisfied that the matters have received attention before the state decided to launch the project and thus the work restarted. Later, the campaigners met Padmasri Jodi Vengadajalam, the Honorable Governor of Kerala and she agreed the request of the people and the work was halted till the center set up the committee on this issue and its report. The political climate changed in Delhi and Mrs. Indira Gandhi became the Prime Minister and in 1981, she declared that Silent Valley will be protected. Later in 1983, the central government re-examined the issues through a commission headed by Professor M. G. K. Menon and the Silent Valley project was called off. In 1985, 
then Prime Minister Mr. Rajiv Gandhi formally inaugurated Silen Valley National Park. From these two examples that is Chipko movement and Silen Valley movement, we can see the direct involvement of society for the conservation of trees or biodiversity and ecosystem. In case of Silen Valley movement, the whole state was a part of that and also it went to the national and international attention. Many eminent personalities from scientific and political field visited the place and they expressed their concern against the project and ill effects of the same on the ecosystem. Salim Ali, Madhav Gadgil, C. V. Radhakrishnan, M. S. Swaminathan, Subramanian Swami, Sidharam Kesari, Pillu Modi and Krishna Kant are a few of them. Different scientists and conservation biologists were in the front to advocate and spread the message of conservation of the environment and the public realized the importance of that and responded positively. These two movements thus changed the wrong step taken by the government or their agencies because of the collective voice from the public. Before we end the session, let us know something about the importance of Bishnois of Rajasthan and their contribution in environmental protection. Bishnoi is a community of nature worshippers in the state of Rajasthan. They also have a sizable presence in the neighboring states of Gujarat, Haryana, Punjab and Delhi. The sect was founded by Guru Jambeshwar and he had laid down 29 principles to be followed by the sect. Bish means 20 and Noi means 9. Thus, Bishnoi translates as 29 years. Many of these principles are related to personal hygiene and protection of nature. Bishnois are strong lovers of wild animals and trees. The Kajri tree is considered to be sacred by the Bishnois. In 1730, Amrita Devi, a Bishnoi woman, came to know about the group of people sent by Maharaja Abhay Singh, the ruler of the kingdom of Jodhpur, came to the felling of Kajri trees for the construction of new palace. Amrita Devi protested against the Maharaja's men who were attempting to cut green trees and told that she would give away her life to save the green trees. It is at this stage she said that if a tree is saved even at the cost of one's head, it is worth it and offered her head. The three young girls of Amrita Devi, Ashu, Ratni and Bhagu were not daunted and offered their heads too. The members of the 83 Bishnoi villages came together and decided that for every green tree to be cut, one Bishnoi volunteer would sacrifice his or her life. 363 Bishnois, young and old, men and women, married and unmarried, rich and poor, had become martyrs in this way and the tree felling party reported this to the Maharaja. Honoring the courage of the Bishnoi community, Maharaja Abhay Singh apologized for the mistake committed by his officials and issued a royal decree engraved on copper plate that states, all cutting of green trees and hunting of animal within the revenue boundaries of Bishnoi villages was strictly prohibited. It was also ordered that if by mistake any individual violated this order, he would be prosecuted by the state and severe penalty imposed. Even members of the ruling family would not shoot animals in or near Bishnoi villages. Although Bishnois paid a huge price for saving a few trees, this incident have inspired and will continue to do so in future, many others to fight and protect trees and wildlife. So let us be aware of the importance of the environment, trees and the ecosystem and let us hold our hands together for the protection of the environment by which we can continue to enjoy the nature and protect the resources and the climate for the generations to come. Let these movements be our models to learn what we can do for protecting our nature and how can we achieve it. Hope you have got a good insight on the movements in India for the protection of environment. Until we meet again, bye.